In this video, we'll introduce you to Viking's new high expansion foam estimator. This is a web-based utility to be utilized alongside our new high expansion foam generators for protecting things like aircraft hangars. Upon arriving at the website, you'll see something similar to the following preceded by a brief disclaimer. Upon accepting the disclaimer, you'll uh, see this video at the top right up here, and then you'll see a click to toggle between walkthrough and expert mode if this is your first time walking through the estimation utility or you're not super familiar with foam systems you should just continue with the walkthrough mode but if you use this pretty often you can toggle to the expert mode and all that does is expand all the various options and you can walk through it just a little bit quicker for the purposes of this demonstration we'll continue in the walkthrough variant the first option is to choose your design standard. So if you're designing to a commercial or private aircraft hangar, you're probably going to be using the NFPA 409 standard here. We offer two variants, the 2016 edition or 2011 and prior. This is going to come down to your locality, but the main difference here is that a reserve tank uh, is going to be required for the 2011 and prior editions. The third option is to utilize the UFC design standard which is the Unified Facilities Criteria, and this is what you're going to be using in the event you're designing for uh, the Department of Defense or another government project. We're going to proceed with the NFPA 409 2016 edition. Step two is to choose your hangar group. So here we have all the various criteria describing the hangar groups. So for instance, if you had an aircraft hangar with a access door over 28 foot high, you would be forced into the group one hangar type. So you should take the time, read through this, and understand how these might uh, impact your design and how this relates to your real world scenario. The main effect these are gonna have is modifying your sprinkler breakdown factor. This is utilized later in the calculation when determining the total quantity of foam and what generators to use. So definitely pay attention here. For the purposes of this, we're going to proceed with the Group 1 criteria. The next option is to enter the building dimensions. So here you can either specify a length and a width, and we will calculate the area for you. Or alternatively, you can just type in an area. We will pre-populate the foam depth to use based on the standard chosen. So it's 3 feet for NFPA 409, and it would be 3.2 feet for the UFC standard and this results in a total volume of foam. Proceeding on, you need to specify the leakage factor. So this is a factor to account for uh, leakage around doors or windows or other unclosable openings in a hangar. So definitely take a look here, see how uh, airtight essentially your hangar is, how much leakage could occur, and use an appropriate factor. In the event you are designing per UFC, we may force you into a specific leakage factor due to the requirements of the standard. So for instance, over 30,000 square feet, you're forced into a leakage factor of 3.0. In the event we fall elsewhere uh, within these criteria, such as 20,000 square feet, we will enforce a minimum value, so a minimum of 2.5 due to the fact we fall within 15 and 30,000 square feet. But you do have the option of choosing a more conservative value, such as 3.0 but you are not allowed to choose a less conservative value that falls outside of the required ranges. So we will revert back to our 40,000 square feet and an FPA 409. At any time, you can change between the various standards and see what type of impact that will have. It's unlikely in a real world scenario, you would end up comparing a UFC design with an NFPA 409 design, but it is possible. We will proceed with a leakage factor of 1.0. The next step is more informational than anything. You need to specify a safety factor for foam concentrate. We recommend a minimum of 15% and this will account for any over discharge. You can change this to a higher or lower value if you would like. The next are purely informational, the duration and foam concentrate. For the UFC standard, your duration will be 15 minutes. For NFPA, 12 minutes. And your foam concentrate will be 3%. 
proceeding on, our next option is to choose a generator. We see four options here. We have a single generator, single with a roof curb, paired generators are paired with a roof curb. These all ultimately use the same generator. In the paired configuration, there is a pairing bracket between them uh, that will basically combine two units into one. The roof curb option should be utilized when you need clean outside air, uh, and this is one of the ways to accomplish that. So for this purposes, we'll proceed with the single generator option. Under the UFC standard, the variance with the roof curb will not be available for selection. When I click next step, it will take me to the choose generator pressure option. So you're presented with a table of the generators uh, in more or less five PSI increments. And this is for uh, every step. You have a unique CFM that is provided by that generator, and then a CFM per unit, and then ultimately a, a quantity of units that would satisfy the design criteria at that specific pressure. So here, you should take a, a look at what might be feasible from a pressure point of view at your most remote generator and design based off of that. We offer the option of toggling on a use even generator quantities option. So if you'll see, we have some odd values in here, such as 23 generators, 19 generators. When toggled on, this will just bring you to an even value. This is generally used because people like to have symmetrical designs when possible, and this will just automatically bring you to an even quantity to enforce that symmetrical design. At the bottom of the page, you'll see the calculation key. This is going to describe the various inputs that resulted in the R factor, which is essentially used uh, in our calculation here for determining the quantity of uh, generators that is required. So you take your total R value, divide it by the CFM at that pressure, and that will give you a exact quantity of generators that you need, 27.19. And then you obviously can't have a partial generator, so you need to round up to the next uh, you know, whole quantity. So this would bring us to 28. 26, and then in our even quantity scenario that brought us all the way up to 24. On the right hand side, you'll see the flow rate of one generator, the total flow rate, and then the amount of concentrate required, as well as the test concentrate for one four minute test. And under UFC, we'll provide test concentrate for two four minute tests. So once you've decided what is a reasonable protection scheme, you can simply click that row, it'll be highlighted in blue. You can change this at any time and then hit the create material list button. This will pop up a screen like the following where you're able to make some fine tuning adjustments to your quantities. So you can adjust the quantity of generators used. You can modify the concentrate quantity. So either the system amount or the test amount. And if you like increased test amount, you should definitely do it in the test amount area because that will not impact the sizing of the bladder tanks or the safe tanks. You can then modify the number of risers. We will attempt to automatically calculate this for you based off of the flow rate. And you can also modify and enforce a minimum number of tanks. So this is separate from the concept of a reserve tank in NFPA 409 2011 and prior. So uh, that's automatically accounted for. You don't need to enforce that here. This is just talking about the main quantity. When you scroll down, you'll see your bill of materials as well as a couple other options. So you could toggle on something like using brass trim or to use a pressure regulating riser. You'll see some options automatically toggled on under UFC. So you'll automatically have a pressure regulating riser. You'll automatically have brass trim and your bill of materials will be slightly different. For instance, you will have safe tanks instead of a bladder tank. In the table, you'll see a few options highlighted as dropdowns. These are options that have multiple possibilities. So here we can choose between different end preparations of our deluge valve. And we can modify that and you'll see the part number switch accordingly. Similarly, you can change by part number, but it's unlikely you know exactly what those correspond to. So it's best to work off of the description most of the time. Once you are satisfied with this portion of the bill of materials, you can proceed to the next step. Here, you can put in your contact information, so your name, the company, 
email address and relative location, as well as if you would like to include any additional notes on the request. And at the bottom there's just a note that under the NFPA standard we are not providing the hose risers, and this is primarily due to concerns related to PFAS. Once you've input your contact information, you have the option of submitting it to customer service or emailing it to yourself. Both, both options will CC you on the email, and what it will do is generate a summary email to you, uh, as well as a PDF that will detail all of the options that you selected here, and you can use that going forward. So submit to customer service if you'd like some pricing, or just email to yourself if you'd like a copy for future reference or to include in some other type of submittal. Once I click email to myself, you'll get a green success. The request was submitted. It should show up in your email shortly, and you have the option of creating another estimate if you'd like. So just by clicking here, it'll refresh the estimator and you can design a completely different system or play around with some different options on that same uh, relative design. That concludes the brief walkthrough of the high expansion foam estimator.